Today, I am pleased to be joined by Nahal Christian, who is an economic policy reporter at the Washington Examiner, to talk about a few different topics, including some interesting tidbits about President Trump from a former White House economic advisor and also a bipartisan economic recovery plan. Nihal Christian, welcome back to the show. It's good to talk with you. Thanks so much for having me, Jimmy. Let's shift gears here. We're looking right now at a very difficult, tumultuous economic environment. Still nearly 40 million Americans out of work as a result of both coronavirus and the government lockdowns and stay-at-home orders, essentially shutting down the economy over the past few months. We're just now starting to see people really getting back to work, but it's a slow-moving process. And so there's a big debate going on in Washington, D.C. about how to handle the economic recovery process, what government should or should not do, and some former economic advisors advisors to presidential administrations, four economists in particular, got together to propose their own plan of attack for helping to spur this recovery along. And now, Hall Christian, what are you reporting for the examiner as being proposed by some of these former advisors? Yeah, so, um, so, so th th these are former advisors. Jason Furman, who was President Obama's economic advisor, uh, President Bush's former uh, economic advisor, um, and then uh, Timothy Geithner, who is Obama's treasurer, se treasury secretary, and then another uh, professor of economics at the University of Maryland. And they have ba they have four essential elements uh, within their proposal to 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 grow the economy and and uh, you know allow us to continue to 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 recover as strongly as possible. Um, and they are income support for the unemployed. Uh, pandemic unemployment, uh, pandemic employment benefits for low-wage workers, support for small businesses, um, and uh, support for state and local governments uh, in terms of fiscal and financial relief. Um, and so these are the four key tenants that they outline in order um, to help us in the, just in the next, uh, in, in, the, in the coming months, um, as the most pressing ways uh, to, to help those, particularly those at the, at the bottom end of the economic spectrum. So in terms of this plan, they're clearly refuting the argument from some conservatives, myself included, that the government shouldn't be doing some extensive programs. Now, they don't want to do everything. They have, as you said, a handful of key planks to this proposal for what should be done at the federal level. But they do counter the argument that we shouldn't do everything nothing uh, or that we shouldn't do anything they they say that you do need to take particular steps why do they think we still need some fairly substantial government involvement so their their, their claims are that if uh if we have no unemployment insurance or benefits and no help for low-wage workers um who are not able to earn enough money then um there is going to be even more job losses, that, the, that there will be catastrophic um, damage to the economy, that it will take longer for the recovery to occur. Basically, they say that, you know, that whatever recovery we've had so far has been propped up substantially and bolstered by the, the economic spending uh, from the CARES Act and others. And if that doesn't continue, there will be a vacuum and a, and a significant gap uh, that, uh, that companies and corporations are not going to be able to fill um, because they're, they're not strong enough to do so yet. What about the argument that spending from government misallocates resources and can actually slow the recovery? They sort of touch on that in, in, in your reporting, uh, although I, I don't know how far they go in that regard. But what do they say about spending slowing down the recovery as opposed to speeding up, as conservatives would say? So, um, so, so Jason Furman uh, says unequivocally that there's no evidence whatsoever that uh, that greater government spending slows down the recovery or results in in, in less jobs, um, and and furthermore says that their plan takes into account even the possibility that that could happen because uh, you know their their the proposals are, are are structured around what they call automatic triggers and that's an essential part to understand of their plan. And automatic triggers are basically only if the unemployment rate dips beneath a certain point or let's say economic growth dips beneath a certain point, then that will automatically trigger certain plans of theirs uh, to be to 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 get into motion 
um, instead of relying upon Congress to keep legislating every time a new issue um, comes up, their automatic triggers, uh, you know, if this were to be passed into legislation, would automatically create certain um, economic actions and initiatives uh, to be put in place. Something that they refute is the idea put forward by Trump administration officials of reducing the capital gains tax. And they specifically say, no, we shouldn't do this. Now, one of the uh, economists that's party to this plan probably, as one of the, I think it was Jason Furman says, uh, probably would oppose the plan if it were to actually include a increase in the tax uh, on capital gains. That is to say that what has been put forward doesn't include capital gains tax. The three more liberal economists that are part of this would support increasing capital gains taxes if that was the case, at least it seems that way, versus the conservative on the panel who would advocate otherwise. And they specifically note that, okay, that we didn't touch on this. And if we did, there would have been a difference of opinion. Can you expand on that? Yeah, absolutely. So, so Glenn Hubbard uh, is yeah, the conservative, right. um, the staunch conservative on their team, um, I, I, you know, amongst their gang of four. And he was uh, President Bush's, um, President uh, W. Bush's uh, chief economic advisor. And so, you know, he would be absolutely for reducing capital gains tax, unlike Jason Furman, Obama's former economic advisor. And that would have been a source of, of friction and fighting between them if this was something that they were considering. But Jason's point, uh, Obama's former advisor's point, was that surprisingly, the, the, the conservatives and, and liberals did not have much disagreement, actually, um, uh, per, because of the, the pandemic and the, the urgency around it. Um, but they said that outside of these immediate four actions that they wanted to take, if we're talking about economic policy more broadly, there would probably be um, many other disagreements. Yeah, that is interesting, where they, they managed to narrow it down to four areas of commonality. I still think it goes a, a little bit too far, but I'm not part of this group of, of four. It's probably I wouldn't want to be a part of the group of four if that was the, the particular plan. But I do think that it's interesting, this capital gains discussion in Washington, D.C., because that is something that the Trump administration is advocating, particularly because they would like to spur more investment. Now, I'm an advocate personally of eliminating the capital gains tax altogether, which isn't a, a very common position. But nevertheless, what is sort of the, the discussion just finally, Nahal Christian, going on in D.C. about the reducing the capital gains tax? Is that something that could actually go anywhere? It doesn't seem so, especially with Democrats in control of the House of Representatives. There certainly is a, a huge wellspring of support for this in in the Senate and the House from Republicans. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think this has been an issue that they have pushed for and championed for a number of years, and the White House is 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 very much backing it as well. But in terms of it realistically becoming law, no, I would say that there's there's very little chance of that, as you said, with the Democrats controlling the House um, and being being opposed to it. As you know, this is an issue which they see is related to inequality and that capital gains tax would primarily benefit the, the rich and the wealthy. And, and so, you know, why would we pass something that would help them when when there's lots of people in the middle class or lower class who are suffering? Um, and, and, you know, there's some truth to that argument that it would primarily help those who, who, who are wealthier, who have capital gains in the first place, um, whereas uh, Republicans say that, that this is something that could help spur economic growth and, and that, you know, people having money themselves, even if it's people who are a little wealthier, uh, is, is to the, the macroeconomy's benefit. Well, especially because if you reduce capital gains, this is the argument which I espouse along with those particular conservatives. The argument is that if you reduce the capital gains tax rate, then you encourage additional investment because the wealthier people are not just hiding their money under a mattress. They're going to put it to work in investing in various private sector enterprises, which then benefits the overall economy because it can help create jobs and pr produce better, more innovative products that make people's lives better, so on and so forth. So it will be interesting to see if this can at least gain traction in terms of the media discussion and the discussion among average everyday Americans in terms of economic policies, because it's not something that is getting too much attention, certainly from an in-depth standpoint. But now, who Christian, knows? Maybe, yeah, maybe ahead, President please. Trump will maybe maybe President Trump will employ one of his uh, strategic exaggerations when it comes to capital gains tax and and make it out to be something oh. a little different. 
bigger than it is. Can, and can, and that's people brilliant. Want out about it. How about President Trump tweets out, I want to eliminate the capital gains tax altogether. Maybe that would do it. What do you think? It could. I, I hope he hears this on your show first. I hope so, too. That is brilliant, brilliant input, Nahal, to, to really encapsulate everything that we have been discussing in our segment today. Thanks for watching this clip from Jimmy at the Crossroads. You do not want to miss a minute of engaging, intelligent talk. Subscribe today to the Jimmy at the Crossroads YouTube channel, and you'll be sure to catch our live broadcast. I appreciate your support. I got Jimmy at the Crossroads Making sense out of no one No sense Yeah <laughs> <laughs>